And we are live right now. It is 4 p.m. Central Time. We are going into our fifth show of the 12 Hours of Boom. This is Scott with the Scotch Test Dummies. Absent is Bart. He is traveling back to his place where he's going to join us. With us, though, for this hour is Roy Duff from Glasgow, Scotland. Roy, go ahead and introduce yourself and your YouTube channel. Hey, I'm Roy, Roy for Aquavite.com, and the YouTube channel is Aquavite. Um, fairly small thing right now. It's got all five videos on there, but um, it's doing okay. It's doing okay despite that. <laughs> well, good to yeah. see everybody. It's good to be part of this. This is awesome. You got you got five videos. Um, the fifth one you just posted recently, but you had one that's doing really good on its own, which is uh, how to pronounce distilleries, which we need in the States. Uh, desperately <laughs> yeah so and then so you've just done a second one to that on on pr uh, kind of a little bit harder ones a uh, uh, cor correct pronunciations yeah that's right and there's still quite a few left to do I think but um yeah the first one I did just because um, I find it really interesting and I find people getting quite hung up on the whole pronunciation thing and I guess you know it's like a given name you know you try and pronounce it the way that it should be pronounced you try and try and you know pronounce it the way that they want to be pronounced I guess but at the end of the day if you get it wrong what's the big deal you know you're still going to get your dram but the thing with pronunciation unless you hear it said it's the only chance that you're going to have of pronouncing anything properly right you can read it but everybody's interpretation of how it's written there even if it, when it's written phonetically is going to be different so that was the motivation behind the pronunciation video, and I'm glad I did it because it's doing really well as a video. I got a lot of positive feedback from it and things, and it was fun to do. So yeah, last week I did the second one, um, and there were some pretty challenging ones in there. So I ended up calling the the Gaelic College on Sky to check some of them out, and I'm glad I did. Oh, really? Because, yeah, I mean, the story is like um, I would have always called Alta Vein, Alta Vein. That's how I knew it. Um, but people that work for the company, Pernod Ricard, that own that distillery, call it Altavane, Altavan, Altavania. So what do you do? It's never been branded. It's never been marketed. So nobody's ever stood up and said, this is how you want this pronounced. So I fell back on the Gaelic pronunciation for that one, and I uh, went with the Gaelic pronunciation, which is Altavania, which um, when I spoke to somebody that worked there, that's how they pronounced it as well, out of coincidence. So... Alta Vanya. <laughs> uh, Hoyt Hempel just asked if Bart passed out. Bart is traveling to his house. We are transitioning. Uh, so Bart will be joining us as soon as he gets there. Shouldn't be too much longer. What Bart doesn't know is that's coming up is Roy is going to give us a little quiz on the pronunciations of some uh, little bit trickier Scottish distilleries. And we're going to give it our best American interpretation. Yeah. <laughs> now I mean, I've got nothing prepared there. I'm just kind of going to do it, um, you know, off the cuff. I guess what I'll do is I'll just kind of pick out some of the ones that's already been um, used in the videos so far. And I'm sure you've watched my videos, Scott, right? <laughs> yes. I'm just seeing if I can get the pop out chat. I guess I don't want to see this chat because it might distract me, right? It does. It does. Yeah, you've got to. Um, it it does pull you away from the conversation a little bit if you're watching the. The comments. I probably shouldn't watch until Bart gets there, just so I can focus here. Yeah. Now you had sent us, or you arranged, like we we say, you arranged for us to get some samples. Uh, one of which we're going to look at today is the Glen Goyne Teapot Dram. Yes. Which is a distillery release only, and it's bottled at fifty nine point six percent ABV. And then yeah. um, a Flora and Fauna Ben Rines Ben Rines. Ben Rennes. Ben Rennes. <laughs> See, there you go. American pronunciation. Yeah. Ben Rennes, 15-year-old at 43%. Um, now, we recently looked at, um, well, those that have been watching, it started with the Glen Goyne 25-year when we received a sample of it and fell in love, which led me to buy the 18-year Glen Goyne out of state in Texas. When I got home and tried the Glen Goyne 18, found it, delicious as well. The next trip to Texas, I had the wife pick up the Glen Goyne 15 and the 12-year-old 
heavily impressed with all of the Glen Goines. Roy said, you've got to try the Glen Goyne teapot dram. Hence, that's where we're at. So, go. you know a little bit more on the teapot dram. Yeah, I think we'll start with the Ben Rennes because oh, it's, okay. it's, a, it's a much softer, softer dram. And I think if, if you're going to have a half a dram of both, then let's start with the Ben Rennes. Um, but yeah, Glen Goyne, for me, I, I, I second what you're saying on that. I think it's a, an awesome distillery. I think everything they do is, is really good. Um, particularly love the 18, love the 21, and the 25 is, is sublime. Um, but yeah, it's a great distillery. In fact, that's where it started for me in 2005. I took a whiskey-loving colleague from Italy into Glen Goyne, had known nothing about whiskey. Um, and yeah, it was a, a complete epiphany for me. The, the Italian guy I was with was disgusted that I could live in the country, and as he put it, that made the best spirit in the world. And I chose to know nothing about it. Really? So he, he was really disgusted. Yeah, he was upset. <laughs> and um, so I took him to Glen Goyne. I did some research, took him to Glen Goyne. We did the tour. And I remember kind of standing, they've got a much nicer setup there now, but at the time it was a little bit smaller. And I remember standing around this wooden barrel with a Glen Cairn glass in my hand with a little Glen Goyne in it. At that time, it would have been the 10 year old. And it just, all the lights came on. It was quite awesome. It was amazing. And I just went straight through the, the distillery shop. I picked up a bottle, I picked up a water jug, a Glen Cairn glass, a t-shirt, you know, the things that you do as a whiskey noob. And, um, and it's been, so it was Glen Goyne that, that switched me on to whiskey back in 2005. And ever since then, it's just been awesome. And I have to say, Glen Goyne since then is continually getting better. It's, it does some good stuff. Yeah, and, and the one we're missing in there is the 21 year. And we've had a lot of people recommend it or tell us, you've got to get the 21. So, you know, yeah. next time I see a bottle, if I'm in Texas, or maybe you have to order it online, I'll be picking that up for sure. For me, it's like the 25, but with a bit more kind of vibrancy, a bit more bite to it. Um, maybe a little bit drier as well, um, but it's an excellent run. Usually, usually very excellent. Now, someone has said that, that it is exclusively matured in Sherry Oloroso casks. Yes, as is the, as is the, oh, here he is. Yeah, oh, there's oh. Bart. Bart, we've gone through the intros. We've got, do you got your sample with us? We poured the Ben Rennes first. All right. And then we're going to move to the Glen Goyne Teapot Dram. Since it's a lot thicker, 59%, we're going to, the Ben, ben Rennes is a lot lighter dram. We're going to start with it. So you're saying I'm going to test it. <laughs> we did. We was waiting for you to do that. Boom. I wasn't sure. We've been having you get some practice at it. I would have been here a little quicker, but somebody had to get some carbs. Oh, what is that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Are you going to eat that while we're filming? Oh, guaranteed. Yeah. That's good TV. And that got chocolate filling in it. Look at that chocolate filling coming it, out of that. It, it, does not, it did not have the filling in it, sadly enough, but it is a long john for a long john. <laughs> you got a hat. You got a Puerto Rican hat. All right, so you got your sample. Go ahead and pour your Ben Rennes. It's not it Ben. It's, it's not Ben Rhines. It is Ben Rennes. Ooh, I got a cherry yeah. note right off the bat. What you don't know, and I've told the the viewers, Bart, is Roy. We're gonna have a little trivia quiz from him. On he's gonna give us some distillery names, and we have to pronounce them. Oh yeah, that's one. That's a great show. My wife watched that show just because she loved like seeing the word and then how it's properly pronounced. Yeah. Well, it's a suggestion of how to pronounce it, right? I mean, there's always going to be uh, where the language is. Uh, there's two different languages involved there, English and Scots Gaelic and obviously different dialects and accents and things. So there's always going to be a bit of controversy with pronunciation. But so there's a suggestion there. That, and I think the ones that I've suggested you should get away with without too much embarrassment. You say suggestion, I say commandment. Okay. <laughs> it's Let's close. It's very close. Whatever yeah, you yeah. point point is you say tomatin or tomatin. Uh, people know what you're talking about. You say balvini or balvini. Oh boy. I, I think people know what you're what you want. Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, there you go. I'll blame it on hey, I'm from the yeah. Midwest, United States. We talk funny. Probably the biggest one, though, was when we got the first Craig Gellicky. 
True. And I would have wanted to pronounce it Craig Gelachi. Right. Craig Craig yeah. Craig Alachi. Right. Would be the American pronunciation. Or technically even Brooke Lottie. I would butcher that if I hadn't heard somebody say how you say it. Right. Yeah. And I think that the shorthand way to say to say that is to say Brooke Lottie exactly like that. It's said slightly differently the closer you get to the distillery, I guess. But at the distillery, they're quite happy to hear you say Brooke Lottie and it pronounced like that. But my one, the one that I tripped over was there's a street in Glasgow called Ledeg Street and it's spelt L A L E D A I G. So just the exact same as the whiskey. But around Glasgow, we say Ledeg Street. But of course, that's from the Gaelic for safe haven, apparently, which is Lechik. And the whiskey is Lechik or Lecheg, um, which is absolutely fine, Lechik or Lecheg. Huh. Um, but I was in a specialist, I was in a whiskey retailer and I, I was talking about Ledeg. And you could see the guy's reaction, you know, but he was kind enough to not kind of correct. And he just later on in the, 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 the discussion, he just let it slip that it was Lechik. And, and that's how I learned that one. And I'm kind of like, oh, well, there's a street in Glasgow called Ledeg, you know, trying to justify my mistake. <laughs> but there's so many because, because so many of the distilleries and the place names in Scotland and the Highlands are rooted in Scots Gaelic. There's just so many tricky ones to pronounce. It's part of the fun, really, isn't it? Very much. Um, do you know a, someone named Drew Bills? Yes, I do know a Drew Bills. He's so watching. You know, you know a Drew Bills as well. <laughs> okay. Drew is one of the Scotch for Dummies. Oh, okay, that's Drew. Gotcha. Oh, there you go. He's the guy. He's the guy that sits at the back right. I had the pleasure of sharing some uh, gorgeous drams with Drew and Mark from the Scotch for Dummies in Edinburgh a couple of weeks ago. That was that was a blast. That was awesome fun. Beautiful. We do have we have a live show scheduled with the Scotch Four Dummies coming up. Uh, there may be a date change. We had them scheduled for July sixteenth. Um, it may be it'll probably be changed. We'll have to keep you updated on that. I see you've got a quote back there too. Yes. I thought they smelled bad on the outside. I know it. I'm not saying it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say I guessed it and got it wrong. Oh, that would be terrible, but I got it, baby. Yeah, I got it. It was terrible. Right, should we start we, should we start tasting this Ben Rhines then? Yes. <laughs> ben I mean, Rhines. This is a Flora and Fauna bottling, which is um it's a series of products from Diageo. You can see the bottle here. Um, they're all kind of labeled in a similar style, the same way with the same kind of font style. The same little etching. I've actually just started to shoot a video on these, um, on the Flora and Fauna range because it's just like a little fetish of mine in whiskey. I love the Flora and Fauna bottlings. I love them. I love to collect them, and I like to taste them. But what Flora and Fauna is is a bottling of all the Diageo distilleries um, that 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 doesn't have a branded product in its own right. So Diageo choose. So they've got like 27 distilleries, I think, or 28, I don't know how many, something like that. And a lot of them, 15 of them or so, have branded whiskies. So Kalila, Talisker, Dilwini, uh, Glen Kinchy, all of these, they're all branded whiskies that we recognize. But there's a bunch of other dist Diageo distilleries um, that end up in, in blends. And Ben Rennes, for example, this is a Johnny Walker J&B um, whiskey. So it's, it's not often you would find this anywhere. The only chance that you would have to taste this would be through an independent bottler. So Diageo, which I think is kind of cool, they choose to bottle these and make them available to people like us who want to taste what Diageo think their expression should taste like from these distilleries that would otherwise go under the radar completely. Hmm. So I think it's quite a cool thing. It, they're not great from a whiskey aficionado point of view because they're all bottled at 43%, nothing stronger than that. Um, they did have some cast strength ones, but they're all 43. You know, they've probably got a dot of color added here and there, and they're chill filtered, no doubt, nasty things like that, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> but I still enjoy them. I still enjoy them as whiskeys. And I think that in that range, there are, there are a few gems of which I believe that Ben Rennes is one of them, which is why I sent you guys a, a little sample. What okay. do you think? Looking at the label real quick, what gets you? I mean, is it just that style, that simple, clean lines? Well, don't you think that's a really beautiful thing? 
It, it does. It, it lays on the bottle nice. Simplicity, simplicity, blah, blah. elegant, but simple. I know you're a fan of that, Scott, right? You like the Balvenie design because of uh -huh. how, how clean their designs tend to be. And the nice thing about the Flora and Fauna range is that, you know, label placement changes a little bit, the, the label size and things, but the, there's a clear family DNA across the range. Uh, so it looks quite nice as a little collection. And l people really love to collect the Flora and Faunas. Some of them are long since gone, sadly, Mortlach. A lot of the distilleries have been sold on by Diageo. A lot of them have closed down. Um, and a lot of them have been branded in their own right. For example, Kalila used to be a flora and fauna, believe it or not. Kalila mm. was a 15-year-old flora and fauna, but it got upgraded and branded in its own right. So um, the flora and fauna version was quietly ditched. But the other th interesting thing about Benrinis for me is that um, up until recently, it was partial triple distillation. So after the first distillation, they used to they would split the low wines, and the lower strength cut would be distilled again. So you ended up with um, a partial triple distillation. Unfortunately, they stopped that about ten years ago. Um, but this is a fifteen-year-old bottling, and all the flora and fauna that you buy are is fifteen years old. So you can still taste an example of a partial triple distillate. And there aren't many distilleries doing that. Mortlach uh, used to do it. Um, Mortlake was famous for it, and also Springbank. Um, so, um, Benrinis is kind of famous for, and tonight I'm not getting this, I often get a kind of meaty, savoury note from Benrinis, that's what you should look for, a kind of savoury aspect. I'm not getting that tonight, but you do get it from it sometimes. Um, for me, it's quite maple syrup and candied plums and things tonight. Yeah, I get, and this is odd. At first, I got just cherry, but then it was a sweetness where I wanted to say like a cherry nibs, which is like a cherry little licorice. Yeah. I was going to say, I get a maltiness, a little bit of a sourness. There's something on the nose. I didn't want to say sherry or plum, but some sort of a, a cask finishing or something in there that's coming in on the backside. On the backside. More, well, no, it's more, it's more kind of a berry. <laughs> that was Sorry. backside, see yeah. backside, yeah. Like hidden underneath. How's that? that? Could be like where you get spanked that, as well. That sounds like whiskey in the six. Yeah, you're getting yeah whiskey in the backside. <laughs> <laughs> Mister Mister Handsome himself, he's on later, isn't he? Yeah, he's on the uh, next next hour. Yeah. I've got to I've got to remember. I haven't sent an invite and in probably five months and it's going to be up to me to send the proper invite mm -hmm. yeah see Roy's already like wow I hear a mistake coming <laughs> well, that's the thing is that you're not going to you shouldn't you shouldn't get through 12 hours of boom without some some small disasters and recoveries having to be made right yeah we're, do, we're doing good except for the episode one we started without volume right I, I did see that I have to be honest I saw that <laughs> I think we're doing good. Other than that, yeah. The opening shot, we were having a, uh, we were having this weird, like cringing spike noise coming over the mic, and we finally, right near the end, we decided to pull, to pull that mic and just go with the internal. But then it, it didn't. Uh, and I saw Scott do it. He flipped, switched over, but it didn't take or something. So, yeah, I like, uh, I like the palette on this, Ben Ryan's fifteen year. It's very. It's very rich. Uh, yeah, I would, I would say that, what, that what, I knew you would like this. Uh, the reason I said when I sent you this is I knew that you would love it, Scott. And the other thing about it is that you should, it's quite a texture whiskey. There's quite a nice kind of, um, I don't want to say waxy, but there's quite a coating, a nice coating feel to it as well. Yes. Um, and that's apparently I'm told it's because they take, they, they want that heavy spirit. They like that heavy spirit at Benrinis, similar to Mortlach, similar to another flora and fauna called Dilluan. Um, so they take a, a wider cut. So they, they, they cut further into the, the four shots and the, the, the tails in order to take a wider cut um, to give that heavier spirit. And I have to be honest that for a long time now, my favorite whiskies have been those kind of heavier texture whiskies. I just, I love them. Absolutely love them. Now, um, I would say there is a little bit, not much, of either a sherry or a port. There's some little bit of a wine influence, I think, on this. Mm. 
So I'm getting a heavy wood tannin flavor. Yeah. Yeah, there is some oakiness in there. <laughs> Drink. There is some um, tobacco. It's, it's a bit like moist, like pouch tobacco to yes, me. Yes, I will give you that. Uh, reminded me of a Levi Garrett, which is the first time, which is a pouch, kind of a wet tobacco. Yeah. But yeah, I think there's undoubtedly there's a um, a fair amount of uh, sherry cask going into this. I would imagine that at a place like Benrinis, you know, probably 95, 98% of what they do will be bourbon cask and um, there wouldn't be much sherry cask um, maturation going on, but perhaps that they keep it for this. I don't know. Yeah, there, there are some, you do get some of the sherry notes, you get some of the, the almond nuttiness. Um, yeah. a, li a little bit of a sour sherry note. Right. Right, I get that sour sherry note with that almond wrapped in there as well, but I think that's that wood influence coming through. Okay, you ready for your first pronunciation then? Yes, sir. Bart, you can go first and then I'll follow up. Oh, I don't. I didn't know what the rule was, but go ahead. Okay, I've got to speak in order for this to come up, right? So oh, yes, Glenn Rothis. Good man. I would, I would say Glenn Rothis. Good guys, well done, well done. <laughs> I've um, I've heard that pronounced Glen Roths. <laughs> uh, you could go Glen Rothies. <laughs> Glen Rothies, yep. Yeah, <laughs> okay, see, see, I was trying to be funny there. I didn't. You're like, yeah, whatever. You had it right the first time. <laughs> yeah, but nothing, nothing surprises me anymore. I mean, it's amazing how that, and I guess, you know, it's if you're not used to seeing things spelled in that way that you're not going to say them that way okay here's here's another one then mm. see you guys are going to know all of these you guys are going to know all of these but here's, um, if you hold up that says something like ancient weapons and hokey religions or something then now then we'll know that we're channeling okay this this will maybe make you think of uh your tomato broadcast hold on Bruno's what do we have here I know it. This is a quit talking. You know what it's got, right? Ooh. This is a, this is a, a Gallic whiskey blend. Chipeg. Yes, not bad, not bad at all. I wouldn't have gotten anywhere close to that one. I was give it a guess, Bart. But you just said it. That was it. Well, guess what would you have well, said? You want to see it again? Tea bag. Oh <laughs> lordy, oh lordy. Uh, I would have said like Tay and then Behag or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was immediately you held it up right after you said well you'll know all these and I'm thinking oh, I don't know that one right okay and just just for fun so what now you say that one though well how, how would you say that one Chavik 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 wow. yeah so the G on the end is the same as Lechik or Lechig it's oh. um it's kind of hardened a little bit to almost a K sound. Um, Juvet. Okay, and this one, now I saw this one recently myself, and uh, I kind of did a double take. So I didn't get this right at the start. So here goes. Try this one. Now, this is a brand new distillery. This is um, a West Highland distillery. And this is named after, apparently, I'm told, a witch, um, a Gallic Scot. Mythological witch. You don't even want to attempt it, do you? I would say Nucknon. Nucknion. Well done, Bart. Ah. Nucknion. Wow. All right. Nucknion. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, so that, that that is, I think it's, um, don't quote me on this, but I think it's. It was scary, though. I was like, oh my. Lana, so Lana it, Lou it, thinks Roy's making these up. <laughs> <laughs> you can hold it up. It's totally, yeah. One of them totally made believe, and it ends up looking like like Scotch dummies or something. But it's but it's Scottish dummy. That's right. Just making it up. Yeah. Oh, uh, Lynn Duff. I can only guess her uh, affiliation with you, Roy Duff. She says she's confirming you're full of it. Ah. <laughs> well, you. You met Lynn Duff about uh, 25 minutes ago, right? <laughs> so um, you know exactly who that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Lynn. <laughs> I missed out on that one. Yeah. 
So, what do we think of the Benrinis then? Good? Very. I, I, I do like it. Yes. Now, um, how about a price point on it? Where are we at? Uh, it's about in sterling, and I think it's tough for you guys to get floor and faunas over there, but I know they do. I know that some of them make their way over there. Um, here it's about fifty-five pounds. Hmm. How, did, how does that? What's the conversion rate? So where? What are we looking at? I think that's about right now. That's about seventy dollars, seventy-five dollars, a straight conversion. I would say that's worth it. Um, now, I also just right there, I just got a little bit of a smoke, just a very faint mm -hmm. hint. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Maybe bottle char. Could yeah, could be. I like that the uh, the tobacco flavor in the in the uh, finish is kind of what I enjoy the most, and that mouth feels delicious. Well, I see the time, and the one I'm most excited about to share with you is the teapot drum. You bet you. Let's get going on that one. That's what I'm waiting for. Boom! Let me cleanse this uh, glass real quick. I want um, one coming back. I don't want to build it up too much. You know, because sometimes you can oversell a drum before you try it. But for me, it's um, not like uh, in the same stable, I guess, as the Glen Farkless 105 or the the Aberlour Um it, uh, But only in the sense that it is a batch produced young sherry cask strength style, um, and it's non age statement as well. I know that Glen Farkless 105 can occasionally carry an age statement, but Generally, I mean, this is a perfect example of the power and engagement you can get from a young sherry cask, and it's absolutely wonderful. Um, if you guys don't like it, I'd be very surprised. Um, it's deep brown sugars, um, sherry, plum. It's it's a r real explosion of flavour. And the way that Glen Goyne do this, that they're on batch five now. This is batch five, is that they select casks. And the the bottle, a selection of casks. In this case, it was five casks. Um, going from memory, I think it was four sherry casks and one. So sherry punchins, kind of five hundred liter type casks, and and one hogshead, so a smaller cask, to give just over three thousand bottles of this. As you said, Scott, you can only buy it from the distillery, and it's it's just a terrific pleasure to sip. Fifty nine point six percent as well. Mm. Now you said uh, for a young one. Did I miss the age in there somewhere, or is it said? Well, it's a non-age statement, but the casks that they selected for batch five were, I think, going from memory, I was told at the distillery, between eight and eleven years. Okay. So this is not particularly young, um, but it comes with a fizz and a vibrancy and a texture that's just. It's. I mean, I could, it's an onion whiskey for me. You know, I could just sit on the couch with it all night and just peel away layer after layer after layer and just adding kind of little drops of water if I could be bothered. But more often than not, I just sit with it, it neat. I just think it's a pleasure of a whiskey. I really do. Now, I am jealous because your glass contains more than mine. <laughs> yes, yeah. look at look at look at Actually, I have to be honest. You know, this whiskey has been shared all around. This bottle, this particular bottle, and I've got, a, I've got a, a small sample bottle here. I'm going to put some in this for Rob. Um, but it's gone all over the place. Uh, lots of people have been given little samples of this. Um, your buddies up in Indiana, um, the Scotch for Dummies as well, they've got some of it. And the reason that I'm sending this around is obviously because unless you come and go to the distillery here, you're not going to get your hands on it very easily. Um, Right. So I, I just, I'm just, I just want people to try this. I'm getting the, uh, the nose delicious. I get uh, like a sweet green lemon grass. Yeah, I was gonna say the nose is actually pretty mild, and I don't, I'm not getting any sherry on the nose hardly, if at all, and it is more just a, a malty lemon grassiness. I love it though. There's something else tied in there. But that, that ABV is also coming in, too, because I, I kind of dove a little deeper with the nose, and then I got in a little, little bit too much, and I had to back off a little bit. By the way, I got coin 328. I don't I didn't grab a coin. I've got coin 181. Mm. I'll show you my uh, – I've got my 57 Chevy cast, too, but we're not giving that one away. So there. It's special. Yes. 
So I do have a giveaway as well. Mm. We'll talk about that. Yes. I need, we need to come. Let's finish this. I just took a sip of this. Oh, let me sip. Yeah. You're enjoying uh, the fireworks. Yeah, exactly. As soon as you put it in your mouth, the, the alcohol, the, the warmness of the alcohol gets you very buttery smooth as it just moves through your taste buds. And, and I don't really detect any of the, sometimes you get those sour notes with a sherry. None of those at all, just a nice sweetness and oak in there as well. And I'm going to just add a little, I'm going to take one more little sip and then add a drop of water. Mm. I'll do that as well. So this, this is a strange name as well. I think this is one of the only whiskies that you'll see with the word dram on the label, right? Right. And um, the name teapot dram came, comes around because um, in order to stop thieving and theft in the distilleries from the casks, they, they did something. They, they introduced something called dramming, and it lasted for about 100 years or so. And that was to give the distillery workers drams throughout the day to keep them happy and stop them dipping into the casks, right? <laughs> but what that kind of whiskey would be, especially at Glengoyne, it, and straight from a sherry cask, Younger guys that didn't really enjoy the whiskey that much or were perhaps a wee bit intimidated, so the story goes, they would hand their drums back. I mean, the older guys, the ones that loved the whiskey, demanded that they accept their daily drums. But what they did is that, that they poured them into a copper teapot that sat in the canteen at Glengoyne. So that later in the day, the more seasoned guys looking for an extra cup of tea, <laughs> um, they, would, they would help themselves to this copper teapot and, and drink it through the day. Whether it's true or not, I'm sure it is, but it's a, it's quite a good backstory and a good way to illustrate the practice of, of dramming, you know, it's th th that used to exist. And uh, I don't know when they stopped it, actually, but I think right up until maybe the early 80s or the late 70s. Um, no, no, my if you worked in a distillery, you were given whiskey daily. <laughs> That's a beautiful side benefit. Now, adding a drop of water, I, I get like the combination of a brown sugar oatmeal on the nose just sweet and delicious and it keeps drawing me back in i'm with you i could sit and nose this without even sipping for an hour and just play with it on the nose well and it's it, it's reminded me of Aberlauer and abunad you both enjoy i was just about to say Aberlauer abuna you both enjoy that you, you uh -huh. enjoy the glenn farkless 105 um, but I've tried this alongside those, and, and I love the 105, I love Abuna. This is a step above in, 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 to, in, to my mind. It's wonderful. It's not cheap. This is not a cheap whiskey. This is £90 retail here. Um, but you can see how much I've got left in this. And I, I'm thinking of just going back up to Glengoyne in a, the next couple of days to pick up another one before it runs out. <laughs> Just, it, <laughs> yeah. That's probably going to put put it pretty close price wise to the Oberlauer here, uh, but more than the Glen Farkless one hundred and five. The Oberlauer here is about fifty to fifty five pounds, so a oh, good wow. bit cheaper. And the Glen Farkless one hundred and five is a little bit cheaper than that again, so um, it, it's quite a bit more expensive than our Oberlauer Abuna here. Hmm. Um, we had a question come in, Roy, if I can find it again. Now, someone was asking, what's your favorite style of whiskey? There it is. Travis Faircloth asked it. That's an easy, and it's an easy answer. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you forced a, a, an answer out of me, I would say that, and it's a dull, it's, it's not, there's not much inspiration behind it at all. It's dull, and it's Lagavulin 16. And I told you already earlier on in this in this um, broadcast that the epiphany I had at Glengoyne in 2005. In 2009, my brother and I, after a fishing trip, bought a bottle of Lagavulin 16 when I didn't like peated whiskies. And it shocked me. It was just such a powerful yet sweet experience. And that I, I would say that that was one of my whiskey journey epiphanies was with that bottle of Lagavulin 16. And, uh, and it changed me from being a whiskey fan to a whiskey geek. It really drove me. It kind of connected with me in a way that just I knew I wanted to get deeper into this stuff. Um, so yeah, Lagavulin 16 isn't the best whiskey I've ever tasted, 
but it remains my favourite, and I'll always have it in the house. It's just that it's just a wonderful, a wonderful ambassador for what Scotch whisky is, actually, if I'm honest. And I don't care. I don't care that it's forty three percent. I don't care that it's chill filtered. I don't care that it's coloured. <laughs> you know, I just don't. I I hate You're laying it the colored. gauntlet down. Boom. That's it right there. Yeah, I don't. I, I like to see naturally. Um, presented products. I like the practice of non-chill filter and natural color. I really do. Um, but you know, some whiskies, some whiskies are sold into a market where, where that's kind of, you know, it's attractive to the producers. You can't let it get in the way of the enjoyment of the whiskey. Uh, is how I feel about it. And certainly, we wouldn't be, in, we wouldn't have enjoyed that Ben Rennes if we, we were uh, chill filtering because it's probably in there. Yeah, Lagavulin. So that's my answer. My uh, my as a sherry Isla is wonderful. Yeah, those are good now. And I w I don't ha if, if someone asks me my favorite style, without a doubt, I say a sherry Scotch. Love them. I mean, nine times out of ten, I mean that's would be my preferred dram. Any guesses over here? I'm gonna say you like Zima. Bingo! <laughs> How did you hit it? As long as it's a peated Zima. <laughs> well, in that, in that sample kit I sent you, Bart, there's a little treat for you. There's a very young Bunahaven there that's got a lovely, it's, it's bourbon aged, it's bourbon Bunahaven, heavily peated Bunahaven, eight years old. Um, it's quite a nice expression. So I put that in there just so you'd have something that fitted into your wheelhouse. Muchas gracias. Hey, let's let's uh, move into, we got, well, me and Bart um, have been doing giveaways each hour. We're going to do that. Roy, you also have a giveaway that you want to do. You have started what's called Paper Cup uh, Whiskey or Paper Cup T-shirts, Paper Cup on Twitter. Yeah. And yeah. you've started some of your own designs and you want to give one away. And you got to explain, you got to explain is, Paper Cup. Sorry? Hmm. You got to explain that paper cup phrase too. Yeah, well, this is just a hobby. You know, there's no way that any of us is going to make any money out of these things. It's just for fun. And the idea that if you're into whiskey, you might want to wear a whiskey shirt, right? So, um, these t shirts, the winner can choose which style they want. There's three styles, and they can tell me what size or even probably what color they want it in. And I'll take care of the shipping and things. But this is the you might recognize um, the styling of this this whiskey here. Lagavulin. No, no. It's very similar, very similar, but it's not quite. Yeah. You're just, right. Well, yeah. That's a, no, I'm saying that's what the styling is, yes. Yeah. It does look a little bit like a Lagavulin 16 bottle, I have to be honest. Moving swiftly on, there's a, the paper cup thing, right? Right. Whiskey in a paper cup. If it's that or no whiskey, give me the cup. Bingo, I love that. So we all know how to appreciate whiskey. We all know the kind of the little rituals and the routines that we go through to get the most out of it. It's fantastic fun to do. But at the end of the day, it's all about the whiskey. And if it's all that you've got to drink out of it is a paper cup, then you know. Boom. And it's finally the strength. last design is a little kind of is a Scots Gaelic phrase. Huh. What is that? Can you pronounce that? Doch and Doris. Perfect. So Doch and Doris, or Joke and Doris, is uh, Scots Gaelic for a farewell drink or a parting drink, one for the road. Mm. And the literal translation literally is drink at the door, Doris's door. So there we go. Um, and we need a question, don't we, for that then? We do. Okay. Um, in front of me is, is the distillery that I got Bart to pronounce earlier, which was McNean. And I told, I think I said earlier in this video where McNean was from. What region of Scotland it comes under? Now, I don't remember that, so you'll all have to let some comments roll in. I hope I did. I think I did. He's wondering um, now. Probably. Was that before I was in? I'll name off some regions as people are naming them. Uh, Highland. 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 Okay, the first person. Lanaloo. The first. Yep, Lanaloo was the first one to comment. Highland. So there you go, Lanaloo. I hope you live close to me, so the shipping costs are minimal. <laughs> I think Lana's in Florida, I believe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you're gonna, she, cool. gets to, she gets to pick her design and the size she wants. Correct. 
Absolutely. And if she doesn't like any designs or anything, she can she can nominate someone else to have it. It's, it's, it's fine. She'll love those designs. One of them, I'm okay. sure. Yeah. Okay, Ooh. now, Bart, what are we going to give away? Are we going to give away a glass again or a coin? Or you got something else? No, you know, I don't have anything else. But you know what I do need to do? And I have my list here. We've got to... Uh, there were 28 people that put in for that rocks contest. And I said we were going to draw this. Do you want to draw this later? I mean, we can do it later when we're at the bar, if you will. Well, you got four minutes if you got the list with you. All right. Well, I've got the list, but let's hold that. Just know that it's going to happen. I'm sure nobody's tuning in just for that. Uh, but we did have 28 people put in for that. Um, you know, we did that. Why don't, why don't you do one more um, for Pandora? Sorry, Pandora. Patreon. What? <laughs> Patreon. Sorry, I was looking at my Pandora deal on the app on my phone, and it just, it Freudian, it Freudian out. It just flew out of there. All right, well, let's go. I've got uh, the glass and the coin I've been using. So let's give the glass to our one of our Patreon followers. All right, we're still at 29, and one, I'm starting to lose the numbers we did. We did three, we did one, we did 15, right? And 26. And 26. That's right. One of the new people. Again, um, you can uh, back us on Patreon. Just go to Patreon and look up Scotch Test Dummies. You can back us for as little as a dollar a month. That helps us bring this free show to you guys. Uh, but today, the Patreon supporters, one out of 29, they're, they're getting chances. So their chances are much higher to win something here. And then I'll have to have you sign that. You didn't sign this when you were here, so I'll, we'll, I'll bring it over. You can sign it before we ship it. And the same with the coin. So go with the random generator number for our Patreon supporter that gets the glass. Siri, generate a number between 1 and 29. That would be 28. Wow. 28. 2 8. That's, a, that's another new joiner. Okay. We'll have to look at that. We'll have to look at those dates. So uh, to get the names, we're going to have to look later. It shows who logs in and at which point in time. I've got them on email here, too. And then the coin I will bring to your house as well, or you'll sign it later before we ship. The trivia question to win coin 328 uh, of the Glen Goyne line that we talked about, uh, age statement, which ones do we not have and we need to get to sample? What would you say again? I was doing something else. Uh, <laughs> no, that was a which age statement, Glenn Goyne, do we not have and we need to get to sample? 21. Oh, Feral Barrel again. He's on it. Wow. 21 year is correct. Feral Barrel, that's his second win. That's like uh, Tell X. Tell X is one, two. So is Feral Barrel. And I've got your email address already, Feral Barrel. 22 catch 22 said the 35 and he's uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> you really need to sample that. <laughs> yeah. He's not wrong there. That's for sure. Yeah. While we're on, can I be cheeky yeah. and give somebody a plug? Yeah, yeah. You got, we got one minute left. Royce, so go ahead about yourself and whatever you got. Okay. Just quickly to give a guy a plug. There's a guy, um, a Scotsman, a fellow Scotsman of mine. Um, and he's a whiskey head. He's involved in the whiskey fabric, definitely. He's, he set up the, the WWW Whiskey Forum. Um, uh, he sets up the, he's, he's involved in the Glasgow Whiskey Festival. His name is Mark Connolly. And Mark is a whiskey head, loves whiskey, but he is giving up whiskey for a year. Whoa. He's given up all alcohol for a year to raise money for charity. So it's for Diabetes UK, I think. But I just think it's a tremendous thing for a whiskey lover to, to do. The effort that he's, he's probably, it's Herculean, right? So if you head over to his Just Giving page, um, uh, you'll find him on Twitter as well as whiskey underscore, uh, sorry. Yeah, whiskey underscore Mark, whiskey Mark. Um, and head over to his Just Giving page, donate anything at all. Um, for a, for a, a whiskey lover to give up whiskey is something, but for a Scotsman to give up whiskey for a year is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. And for, as far as I'm concerned, you can find me at aquavite.com, aquavite on YouTube, uh, aquavite underscore SCO on Twitter, aquavite on Instagram. You know, I'm everywhere, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I just I love being part of the whiskey community. I love the whiskey fabric. I love whiskey people. I love being around it, and it's a wonderful time to be into whiskey. And long may it continue. Hey, what's your? Uh, well, we got to go, Lana. I will get your email address from you later for Roy. We're at the forty-five minute mark. Thank you, Roy, for joining us. Thank, no, thank you, boys. Thank, thank you to everybody tuning in. We'll be up next with whiskey in the six. Scotch it, you Scotch gods. Talancha. Dummies. Dummies. <laughs>